Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Ryan and welcome to Central Park. As always, we know, especially in the winter months, it's hard to get to Central Park. So we want to continue bringing the park to you, both virtually and in person. We're very happy to continue our virtual 15 minute weekly walks every Wednesday at 1230. And of course, if you love our weekly walks, we highly encourage you to come join us for in-person tours or longer virtual programs. If you love these short informal weekly walks, you'll love our more in-depth program where we get to cover a wider range of topics and get to dive a lot deeper into some of these really cool bits of history and park landscape. So please think about joining us for an in-person or longer virtual programming tour. Um, today, of course, we're going to be taking one of our 15-minute casual weekly walks where we explore various landscapes in Central Park. So again, welcome today, February 2nd, 2022, joining me, Ryan, for a weekly walk where we're going to learn where the weather in Central Park is coming from. Uh, we're very happy to, again, continue these walks and to have your support as we care for Central Park. We're, of course, the nonprofit private organization, the Central Park Conservancy, that helps to maintain and manage Central Park. And our mission is to preserve and celebrate Central Park as a sanctuary from the pace and pressures of city life, enhancing the enjoyment and well being of all. Now, for those who have joined us before, you're probably familiar, but if it's your first time on a weekly walk, we're using Zoom. So if you do want to say hello or let us know where you're joining us from, please use the chat feature. If you do have a question, my colleague Jose will be on the back end answering any questions you might have. The last thing you'll see pop up are some visitor polls that I'll launch throughout the tour today. And as we move through those polls, I'll share the results and we'll see what everybody is thinking. Now you may have noticed today we're going to be taking a little interesting of a weekly walk where we're going to learn where the weather is coming from in Central Park. Maybe some of you have heard that famous phrase, the weather in Central Park is today pretty sunny and warm even though we're in the middle or in the beginning of February and right in the peak of winter season. But we're going to learn a little bit about where the weather is coming from in Central Park. And the little surprise that you may or may not know, Central Park actually has a weather station inside of it. And it's one of the oldest operating weather stations in all of America. So as we begin our walk, starting just on 79th and 5th Avenue, I do want to launch the first poll I have for you, which is a simple one. Did you know that Central Park has a weather station? There's continuously new surprises to learn about the park. And I wouldn't be surprised if a few of us weren't aware that there's actually weather readings coming from Central Park. So we're going to find out where those are coming from as we take our little weekly walk today, starting on 79th and 5th Avenue. Now, if you joined us last week, you may be wondering, why am I starting in the exact same location we began in last week for our Hill to Hill weekly walk? And I purposely decided to start in the same location because I wanted to show you a real life transition. The reason we're starting at the same location is because we received snow right at the end of January, giving us a nice snow-packed park for February. So as we enter this entrance we came in last week, we will note a very drastic difference. Of course, lots of crowds. And as we enter the park, we can flash back to just a week prior, around January 26, I believe, or so, when we took this weekly walk starting over here at Cedar Hill. Of course, looking very bare during that last week of January, but in the last few days, this area has completely transformed into a very unique winter landscape. Of course, much like some of the photos we saw from the past, we get to experience them firsthand now as this area just becomes brimming with life. And of course, scenes like this, very picturesque, very uh, just representative of Central Park and really anywhere during the winter, this area just becoming so filled with life. And I know you can see these pictures, but I wish you could hear these pictures because the amount of people and the joy that is filling the air is really something special. And as we come down to this path we visited just a week ago, we can notice now the gates are down and this path is closed to vehicles. While there might not be vehicles coming down this, we certainly have to be careful as we're walking because we're coming right through a prime sledding area. And getting these views of this landscape just transformed with a blanket of white and hundreds and hundreds of children and adults sliding down, it's certainly something that fills us with a little bit of awe and a very different experience that we got just a week ago. But we can see how expansive the sledding hill is, allowing for maybe a little bit more easier sledding on the eastern side or going up to the top western side, coming down that very drastic hill, leading down to this lower area. 
but so many people out here having fun and really celebrating this winter season in the best way possible. As we start to make our way just north now, we'll break away from this landscape we visited just last week and enjoy everybody's uh, fun that they're having throughout the park. As we make our way up, coming just along the south side of the Metropolitan Museum and walking west inside of the park, we'll come to some other areas that we visited not too long ago, like that beautiful Egyptian obelisk, otherwise known as Cleopatra's Needle. And we can make our way through Gray Wacky Arch and right nearby that really beautiful giant American sycamore growing just on the left side of the arch. Passing through this, I'll launch, or I'll rather uh, stop and end our first poll and share the results so it looks like a lot of people were aware there's a weather station here in the park. Well, hopefully we can show the people that didn't know where it is, give you something new to check out in the park. And for those who knew about it, maybe we can give you some information you didn't know about it prior. So we'll continue along. I'll share another poll in just a little bit. But as we start making our way through Gray Wacky Arch, getting its name from some of that gray whack or gray wacky stone, which is found here in the Hudson Valley. We'll come through to some other familiar sites, some more open meadow-like landscapes as we pass through gray whack and come just up near the Great Lawn. As we come up near the Great Lawn, we're getting a lot of different sites that we didn't get a week ago, like this uh, site here on the right-hand side with people holding some skis. Now you might be wondering why people have skis here in the park, but as we make our way out just a little bit further to the Great Lawn, which now is covered in a nice blanket of snow, it makes a little bit more sense why we might see people with skis. On top of using these meadows for building snow creations like snow animals or snow people, we'll also see people having snowball fights as well as cross-country skiing around meadows like the Great Lawn and Sheep Meadow. Many of the paths also will have a little bit of snow left on them, allowing people to really take their cross-country skiing to an extended route all throughout Central Park. And really an interesting one, switching up a usually alpine environment for one of a more urban environments to go cross-country skiing in. But certainly a lot of people utilizing this large oval meadow to go cross-country skiing during this prime winter time. As we make our way just along the western side and south edge of the Great Lawn, we can get, of course, beautiful views like Belvedere Castle, which is actually where we're heading to. And I always love these kind of shots where the sun is in our eyes, and we really just get the profile and shape of Belvedere. And a uh, piece of architecture in the park that really balances so well with the rest of the park's design, not overshadowing the beauty of the nature and all of that beautiful tree line that covers just along the east and west side of Belvedere. As we make our way along the snow covered path, I always like to come off of the asphalt pass and walk on the fresh snow, a little bit soft in spots, a little bit crunchy in others, but giving us a deeper connection to the park and the landscape and allowing us to see the footprints of all the other brave souls that have been venturing through the park, either during or after the winter storm. As we come along the end of this path, we can also find some of the temporary creations that exist from maybe children's or adults' imaginations, but certainly a lot of life and temporary art existing all throughout the park after a snowstorm. And as we move on a little bit further, we can come to a great area for observing wildlife, the nature blind that overlooks Turtle Pond. And while there might not be a whole lot of wildlife out there today, as we come up, we can enjoy that wooden blind that takes us over into Turtle Pond, the most recent water body to find its way into Central Park. One that offer us, offers us a nice view towards Belvedere Castle, as well as that little island that sits just inside of Turtle Pond. Nature blinds are basically things that'll take us out into ecosystems without disturbing the environment and also not really startling wildlife. The reason this uh, design helps us to not really disturb or uh, startle wildlife is because of its interesting setup. We can see looking through it from a few feet off the ground from a human's point of view, we can see right through it and get some beautiful views. But if we were viewing this from an animal's perspective, a little bit lower, like from that island, we would get a much more blocked, blinded view, covering up the view of us people so animals can be a little bit more themselves and not have to worry about us letting us observe wildlife in its more natural state. As we make our way away from Turtle Pond blind area, we can enjoy this beautiful view, as well as this nice structure, which was put up in the 1990s as Turtle Pond was receiving some restoration work by us here at the Central Park Conservancy. Never a bad view to enjoy from this and never a bad season to stop by and visit. 
As we do make our way away from the blind, we'll finally come up towards Belvedere Castle and figure out where that weather is coming from. As we make our way down the path a little towards the west and wrap around the Delacorte Theater, we can enjoy this beautiful uh, theater, which is no longer in use during the winter season, but will very shortly open back up for Shakespeare in the Park. And we recently did find that Delacorte Theater would be approved for some restoration work that was planned for it. So we will see a much needed restoration occurring to the Delacorte Theater, continuing many more uses of this theater for Shakespeare in the Park, an event that is free to the public. And just outside the Delacorte Theater, we can see some other interesting works of art, such as the Romeo and Juliet statue, as well as the Tempest statue, which we can see pictured here. These also being gifts of George Delacorte, the philanthropist who would help fund this beautiful theater. And I love seeing these statues, the Tempest in particular, covered with snow, adding a little bit more really uh, grooviness, you could say, to this already interesting statue. As we move along, we'll wrap just along the uh, west side of the Delacorte Theater, making our way a little bit south now, coming up this snow-covered path, stopping just at top of the Shakespeare Garden to get a little view of some of the beautiful evergreen trees that reside within that small garden. And as we start heading now back towards the east, we're making our way up to the plaza of Belvedere Castle, a beautiful lookout tower that was established up here around 1869 taking a few different shapes over its existence, but today coming back to its more authentic form after a recent 2019 restoration. Taking the steps up will lead us to this newly restored, beautiful visitor center of ours, which offers people a beautiful view out of the surrounding area. Now, this castle itself is really awe-inspiring and tends to steal our attention. A lot of people don't realize this castle is used for something else. It's also used for helping us to figure out the weather. This castle would again be created around 1869, but what we would see forming around 1866 is actually the Board of Commissioners for Central Park helping to decide and create a way to really monitor the weather, leading to a meteorological observation or observatory being created here in Central Park. Around 1867, we would see this uh, Central Park Meteorological Department created, and by 1868, we would find a permanent home for it here in Central Park. In that same year, the first and only director of the uh, New York Meteor Meteorological Observatory named Daniel Draper was appointed. He would be appointed on December 28, 1868 and actually hold that position until 1912 when he would retire. He was responsible for helping to run and operate this observatory, logging different weather observations here in Central Park. Interestingly enough, we would originally see that structure being located somewhere else. This is a plaque we can find uh, dedicated to Daniel Draper on Belvedere Castle's castle today. But originally, we would see these weather observations starting around 1868 being located in the southern edge of the park at the Arsenal building, where today's Central Park Zoo is. We would see um, really this building serving a lot of great use, but eventually we would see a shift occurring to Belvedere Castle. Around 1912, we would find that the Weather Bureau would eventually take over the New York Meteorological Observatory. And they would actually, in that following year, suggest moving the weather station up to Belvedere Castle. The reason was, for the same reason, they kept changing their headquarters in Lower Manhattan. All of the urbanization of skyscrapers made it pretty hard to really get proper gaugings of the weather. So they decided to really move it from the arsenal, which was starting to get a lot of infrastructure built around it, up to a more open area. One that was suggested was up here near Belvedere Castle, which was well, relatively open on the second highest rock in Central Park, Vista Rock. We would see the Weather Bureau taking over in 1912, and in 1918, readings would begin up here in this general area of Belvedere Castle. By 1920, we would see an official move of the weather station up here. And in that same year, windows and offices would be added to Belvedere Castle, transforming this historically open air building. The two viewing decks up top made a great area for observing and recording weather. And we can actually still enjoy the weather from up here today. Looking up at the top deck, which we can see viewed here from the first level deck, we can see the very top of this castle, which at one point had weather equipment on it and which still does today. 
Uh, getting a more open view, we can see some of the wind instruments located up top. And these instruments historically have been up here since about the 1920s. We can see this photo from around 1920, right around the time this weather service would actually move up and start recording weather from Belvedere Castle. Those wind instruments changing up a little bit over time, but still looking relatively the same and still found on top of Belvedere Castle today. If we actually look at this photo, this was an interesting photo that I uh, found and me and my colleague Jose were trying to actually get an idea of where this photo is. And we can actually, we determine this photo is looking at the top of Belvedere Castle facing south. We can actually see that red box on the left, which is highlighting the mall, the intentionally straight path in the park, as well as the box on the right, which is highlighting a snippet or exposed part of the lake. Uh, it's always interesting looking over these old photos and trying to figure out exactly where they were taken from. So here we can see some of those wind equipment pieces on top of Belvedere Castle around 1920, looking south towards the lower edge of the park. As we come to our last stop, we can actually exit the top roof of Belvedere Castle and make our way just outside of the castle to witness today where the weather equipment primarily is stored. As we move just down a path, we're coming to a lesser noticed area. Coming just past these garbage cans, we'll find a small black fenced off area just up top of the ramble in between Belvedere Castle and that ramble woodland area. As we make our way a little bit closer, we can peer through some of the chain link fences to see some of the more modern up-to-date weather technology that exists here. This weather technology is still being operated um, by the Weather Bureau. And we see a lot of interesting pieces in here, a lot of things that I do not know what they do, different types of barometers and other scientific equipment, ones that are measuring things like the rainfall, the humidity, um, we are going to see, of course, temperature, as well as things like uh, wind direction, which are still taken from the top of Belvedere Castle. But much of the information and materials we see here are coming from automated readings today. Looking back in the past, we can see that this area hasn't really changed up too much looking pretty much very similar to how it did back around 1920. Once that station would be permanently set up up here, we would see readings typically coming and a lot of them being actually uh, manually recorded. It wouldn't be until about the 1960s that we'd see more automated readings coming from some of the equipment that was installed here. And interestingly enough, in uh, January 1st, 1961, we'd actually see this weather station becoming the official New York City observation site. One of the reasons being, similar to the move up here to Belvedere Castle, all of these different weather bureaus and meteorological sites were transferring from building to building in Lower Manhattan and Midtown. We'd eventually see the Weather Bureau relocating to the Rockefeller Center area. And of course, all of those buildings made it really difficult to get accurate weather, accurate weather readings. So we do see a lot of those areas being abandoned. And we see typically a lot of weather stations going to airports, which are interesting because they're usually many miles away from where the main population is. So this is actually one of the most accurate locations and accurate weather stations that we can find really in New York City, especially because it's actually coming from where people are living in the middle of Manhattan and the other five boroughs. We're actually seeing in 1961 on January 1st, this is again officially dedicated as the official New York City observation site. From this point on, this is where you start to hear the weather in Central Park is. And of course, if you ever hear that, the readings are coming directly from here in Central Park. We see all the recordings being automated today, except for sky cover and snowfall. And early in the 1960s, we would actually see people having to drudge through the park, through all that snow, to get a reading from Belvedere Castle. Today, uh, we do handle a lot of the snowfall readings, us here at the Central Park Conservancy or Central Park. But we can still see how much that equipment has modernized over time, looking very fancy, sometimes looking like a spaceship, like this piece, which I believe is measuring rainfall and precipitation. We can see a lot of interesting things throughout this small little unnoticed area. And as we come to really the end of our weekly walk, I do want to launch a last poll. This one is going to be a little bit of a guessing game, unless you're familiar with New York City's weather or you've lived and experienced it personally. But for this one, I want to see if you want to guess what the record snowfall for Central Park was, or for New York rather in general. Um, so I put all of the months and dates 
that correlate with a specific blizzard or snowstorm. So I'll let everybody vote in these dates, which we can see range from 1947 to 1888, upwards to more recently in 2016. So I'll let everybody vote in this last poll as we come to the end of our walk, enjoying some of the modern equipment and enjoying really how far we've come in meteorological science. Again, having more modern up-to-date technology, but also breaking away from the manual readings that we'd see back in 1961, like this photo, as well as all the photos we've seen today historically, coming from the National Weather Service, which still, of course, maintains and helps to run this weather station. Um, this weather station, again, having humble beginnings back around 1868, down, down near the arsenal, moved up to here around 1920, becoming more automated around 1961 and continuing to this day to provide us weather. Uh, the oldest weather station in North America, in the United States, is going to be created uh, in Massachusetts in 1885. So if you count the move from the Arsenal building up here to Belvedere Castle, we do have the oldest operating weather station in all of America. That is, again, if you count the move, which a lot of people don't. But being a big fan of Central Park, I always love our weather station and all the deep, rich history that we have here. As we come to the end of our walk, I do want to share just one more interesting little result. It's some of the observations from the first time weather was recorded in Central Park, being recorded originally back from the Arsenal building down near the Central Park Zoo. And we can see some of the interesting things, um, like how there was about nine inches of snowfall observed on January 1st. 1869, which was very different than the normal about 0.2 inches that they would record. But a lot of interesting information we can find, recordings from this weather station, which have continuously been kept, again, uh, since about 1920 from Belvedere Castle. But a lot of really interesting information we can pour through. This, again, as well as the other images we view today, coming from the National Weather Service. And you can find a lot of this information on the NOAA website, the uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, um, but a lot of really amazing history to look back on and reflect on how deep of a rich history Central Park has, even with things like weather. As we come to the end of our walk, I wanna share that poll that we just launched and we'll see who got the right answer. Of course, no wrong answers. This is a guessing game and I don't expect everybody to be uh, expert meteorolo meteorologists. But what we can see here is a lot of people pick that 1947 date. We're actually going to see the December 1947 date being the third most uh, snowfall New York City has received, getting 25.8 inches for December 1947. In February 2006, that was um, for quite some time the record holder, being 26.9 inches of snowfall. The winner, it is going to be, believe it or not, January 2016. In January 2016, New York City uh, recorded its highest ever snowfall at 27.5 inches over the course of about 24 hours. So a really amazing snowfall, but so many amazing blizzards to look back on and so many amazing pieces of information that we can find coming from right here in Central Park at our very own weather station. As we come to the end of our walk again, thank you so much for joining us and showing support for us here at the Central Park Conservancy. We are of course gonna be keeping uh, these weekly walks going. We're also gonna be continuing virtual programs and plenty of in-person tours. And of course it's February, so we do wanna give a special shout out for Black History Month as we start to unveil some other programs coming out, plenty more Seneca Village um, opportunities to come on both in-person as well as I believe some virtual that we'll have coming up. But we certainly have plenty of other different programs coming out as we eventually move into March and get to Women's History Month. So you can certainly check the chat feature now to find some links for upcoming programs. Do keep an eye on again for plenty of Seneca Village opportunities coming up as we do in-person tours for those. And of course, plenty of other ways to engage in the park, whether you're at home or here in New York City. You can certainly use our website, centralparknyc.org find self-guided tours, information on a bunch of things, and of course, continue this conversation. Uh, if you do check the chat, again, you will find some links. You can also find a link uh, my colleague will share about some of the interesting information regarding this weather station. Of course, 15 minutes isn't enough time to dive into the full, full details, but certainly if you'd like to read up, you can find more information at that link in the chat box. Um, as always, I will keep this open for a few more minutes in case there's any unanswered questions we can get to. 
But otherwise, we hope to see you soon. I want to thank you again for joining us and remind you that the park does need us and we need the park. So what is it about the park that you need the most? We'd love to hear from you and you can share using the hashtag the park needs us and we'll feature it on our social media channels. So thanks again, everybody, for joining us and from all of us here at the Central Park Conservancy. Stay safe, be well, and we'll see you soon.